Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. my favorite person in all the world. Oh, Chief, Chief I, I don't know what to say. Well, just tell me how he is. <laughs> Mr. Clampett. Oh, fine, fine, fine. Uh, Granny and Jethro are on a little visit back to the hills. What? Oh, it's all right. Mr. Clampett is still here. And there's money? <laughs> still here. <laughs> Ellie Mae's still here, too. Good, good. She's doing the cooking. <laughs> Ellie is cooking? Yes. Well, quick, we've got to get up there. Why? Mr. Clampett might eat some. <laughs> yeah, sit down, Pop. Everything's ready. I've been cooking all morning. Yeah, I have, huh? Yes, sir. I walked up a big batch of pork chops and homemade biscuits and gravy. Well, uh... Let's see now. That's a pretty fair-looking done to a turn pork chop. But that's a biscuit. <laughs> It's a pork chop in this dish with the cover on it. <coughs> Tell me what you like. Well, uh, I believe I'll start out with a couple of these biscuits. <laughs> you didn't set a place for yourself. Well, it's a funny thing, Pa. Being in the kitchen so much just kind of took my appetite. When I cook it, I don't care too much to eat. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> well, uh, do you like some gravy on your biscuits? I sure would, and this is exactly the way I like my gravy. Thick and brown. Well, that's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Cook it in a pan, because the coffee pot got clogged up with what I made for breakfast. <laughs> Set up on you again, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Ellie, you know, a girl as pretty as you oughtn't to waste your time cooking. I don't mind, Paul. Now that I'm getting good at it. <laughs> well, I'll fetch you some gravy. Fine, fine. Would you like it on your biscuits? All right. <laughs> kind of set up on you, too. Now you know how you like the gravy thick. <laughs> Sure, put that away. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, well, that was some meal. Bet you weren't either. Well, now, Ellie, I ain't really very hungry. Got chocolate sauce on it. Chocolate sauce, huh? Yeah, and I know how you like that. I do for a fact. Well, fetch it up. Well, love you. <laughs> Too late. Chief, you're over-dramatizing the situation. Ellie's cooking isn't that bad. Why, I remember a meatloaf she cooked once. It was... Oh, I hope we're not too late. <laughs> Bye, doggy. That's a mighty tasty dessert. Well, I guess you wasn't just funny when you said what you did about chocolate sauce. What did I say? Well, you always said you could eat sawdust. It had chocolate sauce on it. Hey, <laughs> me. You didn't feed me chocolate-covered sawdust, did you? Of course not, Paul. Good. That was last night's meatloaf. <laughs> meatloaf? Remember, you said it was so 
good she was going to save it for tea, sir. Mrs. Mosby, am I too late? I'm afraid so. No, you ain't, Miss Jane. There's a whole dish of pork chops here. <laughs> we got company. Why don't you run up and put on a nice, pretty dress? Well, yes, sir, Pop. Mr. Crabbe, are you all right? Sure, I'm fine, thanks. Uh, glad to see you back, Mr. Drysdale. I, I just heard about Ellie cooking. Miss Hathaway should have told you to take your meals out. Well, I have been taking them out and uh, burying them. <laughs> living on. Well, Granny left enough vittles for a couple of weeks, but since that run out, it's been mostly roots and berries. <laughs> and there is a squirrel I am right beholden to for nuts. <laughs> well, that's, that's terrible. That's all right, I'll make it up to him. <laughs> no, starting right now, you're eating at my house. Well, that's awful nice of you, but I wouldn't want to hurt Ellie's feelings. She's trying her best. Besides, I look for Granny and Jethro back any time now. Did you arrange their transportation? Well, no, Mr. Clappett said it had been taken care of. Oh, they're traveling first class, of course. Oh, sure, they took the truck. <laughs> <laughs> they should be flying. They probably are. You can't go too fast for Granny. <laughs> Pitching it 10, 12 feet like that. But Uncle Jed, if you look at your shoes, you didn't wear them clean down to your pink socks. What pink socks? Them's my feet. <laughs> Pause himself a driver. The minute he takes the wheel, wham, he's smacked into something. Now, Granny, the boy has learned his lesson. From now on, he's going to drive sitting in the seat like other folks. But Uncle Jed, I wasn't driving, I was pushing. Pushing? Yes, sir, Miss Jane. Been pushing ever since the truck gave out on us at the city limits. Los Angeles or Beverly Hills? San Bernardino. <laughs> San Bernardino? Why, well, that's 50 miles. Yeah. Thank goodness it was all freeway. <laughs> something too. A dress? No, but it's a Pearl Bodine original. <laughs> it's a hat. <laughs> Here it is. Ain't that a world beater? Pearl kept it simple so you could wear it to the bank. And she will. She will. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I don't know what to say. Right on, Miss Jane. Yeah, let's see what it does for you. Oh, well, my hair's oh, fantastic. Now, come on, give us a treat. <laughs> Rides a little low, don't you think, Granny? Well, Pearl didn't know her size, but she can pat it out with tissue paper. Well, it is lovely. I'll, I'll write Pearl a note and thank her. You know, Mr. Drysdale, Pearl has never made nothing for me. 
Oh, what a shame. Until now. <laughs> she has took up making hand-painted neckties. <laughs> One for you, Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> And one for you, Jed. Mmm, <laughs> Did Pearl paint this? She sure did, freehand. No tracing or nothing. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about getting caught in the rain. That is genuine outdoor barn paint. <laughs> it's, it's really, it's a... Well, she shouldn't have done it. <laughs> well, Pearl has a favor to ask of you. She has? Well, you see, she's right anxious to know how city folks takes to these. And she'd like it a heap if you'd wear yours to the bank. <laughs> oh, you will, you will. <laughs> will you? Granny, you're embarrassing Mr. Drysdale to ask him a question like that. He's our friend and our neighbor. You know he'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, of course. <laughs> well, Miss Hathaway, we better be going. Oh, oh just a minute. I got another present I brought you. I picked it out myself. It's for your office. Souvenir. <laughs> Schneider Swamp. <laughs> That's the big health resort back in our neck of the woods. Folks come from miles around to take the cure. Cure for what? You know, Jen? No, but it must work. Nobody ever comes back. <laughs> Thanks again for these lovely gifts. Oh, yeah, yes, indeed. Glad you like them. Don't you want to see what else I brought from home? Another time, Granny. <laughs> oh, would you leave the door open, Miss Jane? I gotta ask Granny where she wants her sorghum. Is that thing full of sorghum? Oh, yes, sir, 60 gallons. It must weigh a ton. Oh, no, ma'am. Only six or seven hundred pounds, but it's kind of clumsy. <laughs> and I'm pooped from pushing that truck. There it is, Dad. Telephone. Granny, we got telephones all over the house. Not like this, and you ain't. Looky here. Granny, where do you want your sorghum? All it oak. Not only is it built better, but with these new phones, you don't have to dial. <laughs> all you do is turn the crank, lift up the receiver, and say, hello, Central, give me so-and-so. <laughs> I never knowed anything could be so much enjoyment. Why, back to Pearl's, I used to spend 10 to 12 hours a day on this thing. It's a heap of talking. I was listening. It's what you call a party line. <laughs> Jethro, what are you doing? Get up in there, boy. Yeah, that's my sorghum barrel you're playing with. If that thing was to bust open, we'd have awful mess. If you want to do something, connect up my new telephone. Did Jethro do that? He took it down at Pearl's. How do y'all like my party dress? Oh, we ain't you pretty. What Pearl can do with a needle and thread just ain't to be believed. We gotta have a party so Ellie can wear it. Quick as I get my new telephone connected, I'll invite everybody on the line. You hear that, boy? Hurry up. <laughs> I thought I told you to get up from there. Come on, on your feet. Look at that. He's done wore himself out playing with that heavy barrel. You'd be tuckered out after pushing a truck 50 miles on the freeway? Well, we stayed pretty much in the slow lane. <laughs> okay. All right, no more playing. Take that barrel around back and connect up my telephone. Oh, Granny, I'm plumb spent. I can't move a muscle till I have some vittles. Well, come on, Jethro. I'll make you a meatloaf. <laughs> Never mind, Ellie. I just got my second win. <laughs> Jethro's got your party line telephone up. It's been up for a half hour. I ain't getting nothing on it. Let me see. How come you put it so low? I said to. <laughs> Told them to put it rocking chair high. I don't hear a thing. Sure you know how to connect it up? He claimed he did. Said he'd been watching them telephone fellas, the ones that climb the poles. Maybe I can find him if I follow these wires. Jethro? 
Yes, sir. Granny's waiting for you to hook up her telephone. Uh, yes, sir, I, I know. You think you can climb a pole with all them tools on you? Oh, yes, sir. You see, them telephone fellas got great big old spikes strapped to their boots. <laughs> you got some? Yes, sir. Well, what are you doing staying in there? Trying to pull them out of the ground. <laughs> Hit a soft spot. Sunk into the handle. Is them my good potato forks? <laughs> yes, sir. Old steel, I'll cut you loose. Thank you. How long you been stuck here? Quite a spell. He got to where the birds was lighting on me. <laughs> you call me to help you. I was afraid you might think I was kind of dumb. <laughs> Why would I think a thing like that? I guess you're right. Well, tell Granny I'll have her hooked up in no time. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> well, who are you listening to? Ain't listening to nobody neither. <laughs> Jethro still ain't got me connected up yet. Run outside, see. Good news, you... Granny. Jethro's up the pole and he says that. Uh... You ain't cooking, are you, Ellie? Oh, I'm fixing to, Paul. I figured I'd bake up a cake for the party. Well, um, oh, instead of that, uh, why don't you run out to where Jethro's sitting on top of that pole? Well, what for? Well, I don't want no terrible accident to happen. Oh, don't you worry, Paul. I won't let him fall off that pole. That ain't the accident I had in mind. <laughs> Where am I going to come in hearing something? Any minute, Granny. You know, there's a heap of wires up on that pole for Jethro to choose from. How you coming, boy? Fine, Uncle Jed. <laughs> Granny's going to have plenty to listen to. These old telephone wires is humming like a swarm of bees. <laughs> I don't know what you heard, but it must have been an earful. <laughs> Granny. <laughs> Excuse me, Chief. Just a minute. Now, look, Margaret, I don't care how long the electricity has been off. I can't fix it. Call the power and light. My wife says the whole neighborhood is... Get that nightmare off your head. The puppets are on their way up. But oh, oh, my God. Put mine on. Here. Can we come in? Well, look who's here. We were just admiring our beautiful gifts. Well, uh, we're glad you like them. Oh, lovely. Now, what can we do for you? Well, uh, it seems that Granny here come back from the hills with a powerful hankering to have herself a party line telephone. A what? A party line telephone. A party line telephone? Jed, ask him about the party line telephone. I just did. Right? Hey. See, I just did. Did what? Ask him about the party line telephone. Well, if you won't do it, I guess I'll have to. I'd like to have a party line telephone. Has something gone wrong with Granny's hearing? Yes, ma'am. You see, Pearl give Granny her telephone. But Jethro must have hooked it up wrong because it blowed up in Granny's ear. Jed, tell him what happened to Pearl's telephone. <laughs> You see, Pearl gave me her telephone, but Jethro must have connected it up wrong, because every time... Granny, I told him. Hey? Mr. Clint, explain to us what happened with Pearl's telephone. That's it. That's what I want. Can you get me one? It's your pleasure, he... Well, I'll do my best. What'd you say? He said he'd do his best. Hey! Yeah. Looks real nice with Pearl's top. But what about the telephone? You'll do it. Okay. I'll do my good. Thank you, Mr. Drysdale. And I'd like about ten or twelve parties on the line. And see if you can get me Pearl's old ring. Three shots. Thanks again. Chief, 
This is Beverly Hills. You'll never... Oh, connect me with the telephone business office, please. This is the home of private phones and unlisted numbers. You'll never get the clamp. It's a party line. Don't worry. The right threat can accomplish miracles. You're, you're going to threaten the telephone company? No, I'm going to threaten you. Get them a party line or you're fired. Hello? That's a nice little walk down to the bank and back. We ought to do more of that, don't you think? You know, Dad, that's a nice little walk down to the bank and back. I think the exercise helped my hearing. Yeah. I should have known better than to depend on you. B but, Chief, What I... am I going to tell the Krampus when I want to know why? There they are. <laughs> yeah, wish I had. Oh, oh, it's in there. <laughs> come in, come in. <laughs> I was just admiring this beautiful pillow. Can't wait to get to Snyder's Swamp. Well, I won't hold you up long. <laughs> Who are you? Well, I'm Mr. Kramer with the telephone company. The business office says you requested a party line. Well, <laughs> not for me. It's for this eccentric little lady. Oh. <laughs> I understand you want a party line. <laughs> no, no, no. She's not the one either. I'm talking about a real oddball character. <laughs> I see. But in any event, I have come to explain that the telephone company is unable to grant your request. Baloney. I beg your pardon? It's no longer a request. It's a demand. Demand? Yes, my bank does a lot of business with a telephone company. Now, either you give the clamp it's a party line, or you're going to lose a good customer. Now, drop that in your coin box and see what number you get. <laughs> Fetch Mr. Drysdale and Granny, I'd be much obliged if you'd stop your belly aching. Seems to me we got a whole heap to be grateful for tonight. Name me something. Well, uh, Mr. Drysdale taking us all out to supper. Yeah, we won't have to eat Ellie's cooking. Hiya. <laughs> and uh, Jethro's got the truck running again. Uh, you got your hearing back? What good is it? I ain't got no party line to listen to. <laughs> Granny, don't you be throwing that up to Mr. Drysdale. He done his best. He went right to the wall for you. Don't you mean mouth him no more. Mr. Drysdale, he don't know nothing. Mr. Drysdale, we ready to go to supper? Oh, good, good. I'll have Miss Hathaway check our reservations. Well, I didn't see her in her office. Well, she's filling in on the switchboard. Oh, well, we sure do want to thank you for the scrap you put up over Granny's party line. My pleasure. I showed the telephone company they can't push Melvin Drysdale around. <laughs> Hello? Is that the way? Yes, Chief. Hello, Chief. Is that the way? Oh, there you are, Chief. Yes, what is it? Check my dinner reservation. Yes, sir. Hold the loads, please. <laughs> Great little system. Saves a bundle. The only thing we haven't licked is long distance. <laughs> It's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. And they would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, dear. This has been a Filmways presentation.